Have you ever experienced a burst of anger so powerful it felt as if a volcano was erupting inside you? Imagine that this intense anger, blazing with the intensity of a thousand suns, could be calmed not tomorrow, not next week, but today. We exist in a world seemingly designed to challenge our patience relentlessly, pushing us to our limits. But what if I revealed to you that the timeless philosophy of Stoicism, which has endured for more than 2,000 years, contains the key to not only controlling, but completely resolving this anger? It may seem unbelievable, but we are on the cusp of beginning a transformative journey, a journey that promises enduring peace and deep-seated tranquility. Let's delve into how Stoicism, with its profound understanding of our emotions and thoughts, can lead us to a state of serenity and strength, regardless of life's challenges. Stay with use as we uncover the essence of truly releasing anger and embracing a life filled with peace and satisfaction. If you value what we're discussing here and wish to join a community that chooses an unconventional path, a simple favor I ask is to press that subscribe button. And remember, don't miss any part of this video. Like the enduring wisdom of Stoicism, you stand out in a world too often content with the ordinary. At first look, the task may appear straightforward, yet it is steeped in a tradition that has provided comfort and strength to many, including one of history's most esteemed figures, Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln had a distinctive approach to managing his frustrations and anger. When overtaken by anger towards someone or something, he would withdraw to the quiet of his own thoughts, pen in hand, and transfer all his turbulent emotions onto paper. He referred to these writings as his hot letters. He never mailed these letters. Instead, he destroyed them, thus dissipating those fiery emotions without leaving any path of destruction. So, why do we begin with a task that entails writing down all that angers us and then burning the list? This act holds deep wisdom, embodying a key tenet of Stoicism, the importance of releasee. The Stoic philosophy teaches us the importance of recognizing what is within our control and what is not. Our reactions, our emotions, and how we manage them fall squarely within our control, while the external triggers of our anger do not. This exercise is a tangible manifestation of a deeply symbolic act, recognizing our anger, confronting it, and then consciously deciding to release it, preventing it from consuming us or guiding our actions. It's about taking a moment to acknowledge what's simmering beneath the surface, recognizing it, and then decisively stopping those flames from spreading further by, putting it all down in writing. We are not providing a platform for our anger to thrive. Rather, we're diminishing its influence, confining it to a mere piece of paper destined to be reduced to ashes. Burning the list is more than an act of destruction, it is an act of profound freedom. This signifies to ourselves that we will not be prisoners to our anger. It's a proclamation that we're prepared to advance, free from the burdens of old resentments. Drawing inspiration from Lincoln's approach, this practice marks our initial step towards adopting a stoic mindset, prioritizing the calm of our inner selves over the turmoil of the external world. As the flames consume the paper, let it remind us that our anger can similarly be turned to ashes, leaving behind only the lessons it imparted. This process isn't about denying our emotions or pretending they don't exist. It's about recognizing them, learning from them, and releasing them with dignity. This is the core of Stoicism, discovering strength in tranquility, power in peace, and insight in the act of letting go. It's time to face ourselves in the mirror, confronting our anger directly. This might seem odd or uncomfortable, yet it's an exercise rich with Stoic wisdom. The Stoics recognized the importance of self-awareness in personal growth. 
By observing our anger reflected back at us, we are not merely examining our physical appearance. We are invited to see the transformation wrought by anger, a transformation that can make us aware of the ugliness of anger, not just as an abstract idea, but as a visible, tangible force that warps our expression and, by extension, our self-perception. This exercise might expose a side of ourselves that we are not proud of, a side that we typically conceal from others and even from our own awareness. Anger has a subtle way of manifesting in our expressions, tightening our jaws, furrowing our brows and igniting our eyes with an unsettling fiery glare. This reflection isn't merely physical, it acts as a window into our soul's unrest, vividly showcasing how external situations can control our inner peace. This is where the wisdom of Stoicism becomes invaluable. Marcus Aurelius, the Stoic Emperor, frequently discussed the transient nature of life and the insignificance of the triggers of our rage. Observing ourselves in a state of anger offers a clear visual of how minor irritations can warp our demeanor. This practice highlights how anger can estrange us from others and from our authentic selves. It provides a moment of insight where the folly of letting external events dictate our emotions becomes glaringly clear. However, recognizing the undue influence we grant to anger also offers liberation. It marks the beginning of regaining control, a pledge to not be manipulated by every minor provocation we encounter. This act of self-observation serves as a reminder that we have the choice to respond differently, to prevent anger from molding our expressions into a mask of resentment and hostility. By undertaking this stoic practice, we do more than confront our anger. We start a conversation with ourselves about who we aspire to be. Do we want to navigate life marked by anger, or would we rather embody calmness, serenity and understanding, even in challenging situations? This choice is what Stoicism presents us with, offering not only a philosophical outlook, but also a practical approach to cultivating the virtues we desire. Marcus Aurelius often spoke of the inner citadel, a mental fortress impervious to external turmoil. He taught that the ultimate sanctuary, the most profound place of serenity, resides within our minds, accessible at any moment, no matter what external conditions we face. This concept is not about escaping reality, but about finding tranquility and rejuvenation amid chaos, a center of calm within the storm. The beauty of this idea lies in both its simplicity and depth. Finding inner peace doesn't require an exotic getaway or even leaving our homes. It involves exploring and nurturing a mental space within ourselves where tranquility and beauty prevail. This could be through recalling a joyful memory, visualizing a peaceful landscape, or simply fostering a mindset linked with calm and beauty. For some, this mental haven might be a recollection of childhood days spent gazing at the vast, clear sky while lying in the grass, completely relaxed. For others, it could be the soothing sound of waves crashing against the shore or the serene feeling of standing atop a mountain high above the clouds. The essence of this sanctuary, whether it's a tangible place or a figment of the imagination, is that it belongs solely to us, a private retreat we can enter whenever the tides of anger threaten to overwhelm. This practice of identifying our personal sanctuary goes beyond merely seeking temporary relief. It fundamentally transforms our interaction with anger. By consciously retreating to this beautiful refuge, we exercise our ability to choose our reaction to the external environment. We acknowledge that although we cannot control all external events, we hold absolute power over our responses. By opting to react with peace and seeking refuge in beauty, we embody a vital stoic principle, the power of our minds to shape our life experiences. 
Additionally, this practice enhances our capacity to perceive beauty and peace in the external world. As we nurture our internal sanctuaries, we become more receptive to everyday moments of beauty, the warmth of sunlight on our skin, the soft whisper of leaves in the breeze, the shared joy of a smile. These fleeting instances remind us that beauty and peace are always within reach, not only in breathtaking landscapes, but also in the simple everyday moments of our lives. This isn't merely about crafting a catchy slogan to divert our thoughts. It's about grounding our mindset, reinforcing our commitment to stoic principles, and consciously selecting a path of patience, understanding, and tranquility over the stormy seas of anger. A mantra transcends being mere words. It becomes a vocal expression of our loftiest ideals, a beacon that steers us back to our stoic core when external forces seem bent on derailing us. This approach is firmly anchored in the stoic philosophy that stresses the importance of managing our perceptions and reactions to external circumstances. Just as Marcus Aurelius had his meditations, Seneca his letters, and Epictetus his discourses, we too can create our own mantra, a personal affirmation of our dedication to Stoic values. Developing a mantra is a profoundly personal endeavor that involves deep reflection on the values we hold dear and the type of person we wish to become. It could be a phrase that prompts us to look at the broader context, to remember that this too shall pass, or to acknowledge our inner strength to remain unaffected. Perhaps it's a prompt to confront challenges head-on or to discover resilience in calmness. The essence of the mantra is that it deeply resonates with you and embodies the core of your stoic practice. When faced with trying circumstances that test our patience or stir our anger, reciting our mantra serves as a psychological pause button, allowing us a moment to step back from our knee-jerk reactions and opt for a more thoughtful response. This tool enables us to interrupt the cycle of automatic emotional reactions and realign our actions with our philosophical beliefs. By repeating our mantra, we reinforce our ability to reason, our compassion and our commitment to maintain serenity amidst life's turmoil. The practice of crafting and employing a mantra also acts as a daily affirmation of our stoic principles, weaving them into the very fabric of our daily existence. It transforms stoicism from merely a theoretical philosophy into a practical living experience that influences each interaction we have. Over time, our mantra evolves beyond a mere mechanism for managing anger into a steadfast ally, a wellspring of strength and clarity that navigates us through life's complexities. As we begin to craft our mantra, it's crucial to approach this endeavor with the gravity and respect it merits. We should select words that resonate deeply within us, words that reflect our loftiest goals and affirm our commitment to the Stoic path. This mantra should serve not only as a shield to ward off anger, but also as a beacon guiding us toward wisdom, virtue and a more profound understanding of both ourselves and the world around us. At first, the act of creating a mantra might seem like a passive or even trivial exercise, However, this simple act embodies a potent stoic teaching, one that can profoundly transform our view of the world and our role within it. This task is about intentional observation, about learning from the environment, and about fostering a deeper sense of empathy and understanding amidst the rush of daily life. In the daily grind, it's easy to get caught up in our personal stories, viewing our challenges as insurmountable barriers that dominate our existence. Our problems can seem all-encompassing, clouding our judgment and exaggerating our sense of self-importance. Herein lies the relevance of Stoic wisdom, particularly the practice akin to people watching, which offers clarity and a broader perspective. 
The Stoics, with their astute understanding of human nature, recognized the importance of stepping back and observing the world from a wider vantage point. Marcus Aurelius, for instance, often talked about viewing life from above, contemplating the vast mosaic of human existence and acknowledging our transient role within it. When we sit to observe others, we do more than simply watch people carry on with their routines. We engage in a practice of perspective-taking that is both humbling and enlightening. We witness the various ways life unfolds for others, the fleeting joys, the challenges, the moments of connection and the episodes of frustration. We see the shared nature of human experiences, observing how themes of love, loss, ambition and disappointment manifest in myriad ways across the expressions and behaviours of those around us. This practice of observation acts as a poignant reminder that in the broader context of life, our troubles are not as colossal as they might initially appear. It enables us to understand that everyone around us is also manoeuvring through the complexities of their lives. This awareness cultivates empathy, recognizing our shared human experience and reducing the egocentric view that often precipitates frustration and anger. Moreover, people watching as a stoic exercise prompts us to reflect on our reactions to the world. By observing how others handle their situations, we can uncover patterns in our own behavior. We witness the pointlessness of anger and frustration and see how these emotions tend to exacerbate rather than alleviate problems. This observation reaffirms the stoic principles of equanimity and acceptance, responding to life's challenges with grace and poise. As we undertake this activity, let us do so with a spirit of curiosity and openness. We should observe not to pass judgment, but to gain understanding, not to criticize, but to learn. Let this practice of watching others act as a mirror, reflecting our collective human experiences, the struggles and joys alike, reminding us of the fleeting nature of our irritations and encouraging us to approach the world with empathy, patience and understanding. The Stoics understood the value of engaging in activities that nourish the soul and expand the mind. While they may not have specifically advocated for picking up a paintbrush or playing a musical instrument, the essence of their teachings inspires us to find outlets for our emotions. These pursuits channel our energy into endeavors that not only provide joy, but also cultivate a sense of achievement and peace. Engaging in creative activities offers more than a diversion from our frustrations. It creates a space where we can express ourselves freely without judgment or restriction. Creativity becomes a dialogue between our deepest feelings and the external world, a dialogue that can be both therapeutic and enlightening, whether it manifests through writing, painting, music, dance, or any other artistic form. We are afforded the chance to delve into our emotions, to comprehend them, and to transform them into something concrete and often aesthetically pleasing. This transformation is where the true enchantment resides. By funneling our emotions into our artistic pursuits, we are doing more than simply shifting our focus away from anger. We are actively participating in a transformative process that converts the raw material of our frustrations into the refined gold of artistic creation. This process is profoundly cathartic, enabling us to vent built-up emotions in a productive and enriching manner. Furthermore, the act of creation itself, bringing a new concept or artwork into being, engenders a sense of achievement and pride, which helps mitigate feelings of helplessness or restlessness that are frequently linked with anger. Beyond these personal gains, engaging in artistic endeavors can boost our well-being and happiness on several levels. Creativity activates the brain, prompting us to think creatively and innovatively. It also connects us to a state of flow, that deeply engaging condition where time appears to pause and we are fully immersed in our activity. 
This state of flow is not only profoundly gratifying, but also beneficial to our overall mental and emotional health. Additionally, creativity fosters a connection to our internal selves and to the wider community of artists and admirers. Sharing our artistic outputs, be it through writing, painting or music, paves the way for meaningful exchanges and bonds with others. It underscores that we are not isolated in our feelings, that our complex emotions are a part of the universal human condition. This seemingly straightforward approach serves as a potent tool in our Stoic toolkit, aiding us in managing the tumultuous waters of our emotions, especially anger. It creates an intentional gap between stimulus and response, providing a pause that allows us to choose our reaction to the external world. This practice is deeply ingrained in Stoic philosophy, emphasizing the significance of self-control and the liberation that comes from not being dominated by our immediate responses. The idea of an active pause isn't about being passive or inactive, Instead, it's a vibrant engagement with our internal processes. It involves recognizing the moment our emotions are about to overflow and consciously deciding to step back. This pause acts as a powerful assertion of control, a statement that we are not slaves to our immediate reactions. By taking this pause, we afford ourselves the space and time to contemplate our values and select a response that is in harmony with them. In moments when anger seems poised to take control, the active pause acts as a soothing salve. It serves as a reminder that we hold the power to choose a path marked by reason, compassion and understanding. By integrating this pause into our reactions, we open the door to more constructive and meaningful engagements. It allows us to consider the wider situation, to empathize with others, and to react in ways that forge connections rather than destroy them. This technique is a cornerstone of Stoic philosophy, which teaches that it is not external events themselves that disturb us, but our reactions to them. When we pause, we gain the opportunity to assess our judgments, question their accuracy, and recalibrate our viewpoint. This adjustment can radically alter our interaction with the world, turning scenarios that might typically provoke anger into chances for personal growth and enlightenment. But how do we integrate this active pause into our daily routines? It begins with mindfulness, developing a keen awareness of our emotional state and the triggers that might provoke anger. This awareness enables us to detect early signs of frustration or irritation, signaling when an active pause is necessary. During this pause, taking a few deep breaths and stepping back from the situation, we can reflect on critical questions. Why am I feeling this way? Which values do I want to influence my reaction? What outcome am I striving for? This process of reflection helps us move forward deliberately choosing actions that represent our true selves and align with Stoic principles. The active pause is a versatile technique that can be utilized in any circumstance, from minor irritants to major disputes. It's a tool that is universally applicable, needing nothing more than a willingness to momentarily step back and opt for a different reaction. As this practice becomes more habitual, it seamlessly integrates into our behavior, enriching our capacity to live in alignment with Stoic virtues. This practice is not about belittling our emotions or denying the legitimacy of our frustrations. Rather, it is deeply embedded in Stoic philosophy, highlighting the importance of adjusting our perspectives to better manage our emotions. It focuses on the transformative potential of humor and the understanding that the significance we attach to our grievances is often a choice, a choice that we can alter to lessen its burden. The Stoics taught that we control our reactions to external circumstances by modifying our interpretations or judgments of those events. This exercise is a prime example of this teaching, 
urging us to re-evaluate situations that usually trigger us and view them through a different lens, one that emphasizes their absurdity, irony, or simple human error. This approach isn't merely about finding a reason to laugh, it involves recognizing the often overemphasized importance we place on what makes us angry and opting for a more balanced, healthier response. Consider everyday annoyances like traffic jams, spilled coffee, a co-worker's irritating habit, or a lost phone. In the moment, these may seem like major frustrations, capable of ruining our day. However, by employing an active pause and re-examining these incidents from a fresh perspective, their humorous side starts to shine through. Traffic jams might be seen as a communal lesson in patience, or the lack thereof. Spilled coffee could remind us of life's inherent chaos. By identifying the humor in these scenarios, we're not dismissing our initial feelings of frustration. Rather, we're allowing ourselves the space to move past them and embrace a more joyful, resilient mindset. This approach also leverages the physiological and psychological advantages of laughter. Laughing activates the release of endorphins, the body's naturally produced feel-good chemicals, which foster an overall sense of wellness and provide temporary pain relief. It boosts our oxygen intake, stimulates our heart, lungs and muscles, and enhances the brain's endorphin release. Moreover, laughter can bolster our immune system, alleviate pain, heighten personal satisfaction, and sustain a better mood. Benefits that significantly enhance our health and happiness. Finding humor in our daily irritants can also create a sense of connection with others. Shared laughter is a powerful way to bond and ease social tensions. By expressing our humorous take on common annoyances, we often discover that others share similar experiences, fostering moments of connection and mutual understanding. This not only helps mitigate our anger, but also reinforces the understanding that we are not alone in our struggles. The Stoics valued the virtues of self-discipline and the essential balance between mind and body, recognizing that a disturbed mind could negatively affect physical health, and vice versa. They championed practices that would enhance the mind's resilience and maintain its control over emotions like anger. In this light, exercise becomes a potent tool a physical embodiment of Stoic principles that guides us to channel our turbulent emotions and achieve a state of equilibrium. Physical activity, whether it's a brisk walk, an intense workout or a peaceful yoga session, serves several functions. Firstly, it distracts us, shifting our focus from what's angering us and offering a break from negative thought cycles. This alone can be profoundly freeing, giving us the space and clarity to re-evaluate our feelings from a more balanced viewpoint. On a deeper level, exercise impacts our physiological state by triggering the release of endorphins, often referred to as the body's natural mood lifters. These chemicals not only alleviate pain, but also promote a sense of well-being, countering both the physical and emotional impacts of anger. Engaging in physical activity, overcoming our perceived limits, and reaching personal achievements reinforce our sense of self-efficacy and control, reminding us of our capability to tackle challenges both in and out of the gym. However, the benefits of exercise go beyond the initial surge of endorphins and the temporary distraction it provides. Consistent physical activity has been proven to decrease stress, anxiety and depression over time, fostering a more resilient and stable emotional state. It bolsters our self-regulation abilities, making it easier to handle situations that might otherwise trigger anger. In a broader sense, regular exercise builds a sort of emotional shield, strengthening us against the challenges of daily life and helping us approach obstacles with a stoic serenity and resolve. 
As we engage in today's exercise regimen, let's not view it merely as a physical activity, but as a practice enriched with philosophical depth. We should pay attention to our breathing, the strength in our muscles, and our enduring spirit. With every movement, whether it's a stride, a stretch, or an exertion, let it serve as a demonstration of our dedication to leading a balanced, stoic life. This perspective shift isn't just about increasing our frequency of saying thank you or recognizing favors done for us. It involves a more significant and profound alteration in how we perceive the world and our role within it. Cultivating gratitude is a core aspect of Stoic philosophy, urging us to appreciate what we possess, recognize the value of our experiences, and acknowledge the richness that exists around us, even during difficult times. The Stoics believed that our focus shapes our reality. By choosing to shift our attention from our frustrations and anger to the richness and beauty in our lives, we not only enhance our emotional landscape, but also align more closely with Stoic teachings. This recalibration of focus is integral to embracing a life marked by gratitude and equanimity. Opening ourselves up to this transformational shift is not about denying the challenges or injustices that we encounter. Rather, it's about altering how we engage with them. This shift involves recognizing the opportunities for growth, learning, and connection that are present even in our toughest times. Practicing gratitude entails actively searching for and acknowledging the positives in our lives and valuing their presence. It means embracing each new day with an awareness of life's wonders, the splendor of nature, the generosity of friends, the warmth of our homes, and the countless minor blessings we often miss in our quest for more or better. It's understanding that true satisfaction doesn't stem from external achievements or possessions, but from a deep internal appreciation and acceptance of what we have. This habit of gratitude enriches our lives immensely, cultivating a sense of contentment that withstands external shifts. When we are grateful, the frustrations and setbacks that might once have fueled anger seem trivial and less disruptive to our peace. Gratitude also bolsters our relationships by helping us recognize and value the qualities in others, thus enhancing our interactions to become more generous, empathetic and considerate. Furthermore, gratitude profoundly impacts our mental and physical health. Research indicates that gratitude can improve sleep quality, reduce stress, boost the immune system, and decrease the likelihood of chronic diseases. It heightens our overall life satisfaction, making us more resilient to adversity and more receptive to the beauty and opportunities around us. But how do we cultivate a consistent practice of gratitude? It begins with intentionality. We must deliberately slow down pay close attention and consciously recognize the good surrounding us. One practical method might be maintaining a gratitude journal where we daily note the things for which we are thankful. This simple yet effective practice can help cement gratitude as a core component of our daily lives, transforming our outlook and interactions in profound ways. This could involve initiating or concluding our day with a meditation focused on gratitude, contemplating the good things that have come our way. Alternatively, it might be as straightforward as showing our appreciation more frequently, not only with words, but through our actions too. As we conclude this segment of our stoic exploration together, keep in mind that the journey towards growth, resilience and inner peace does not stop here. It is interwoven throughout your everyday life, in every breath, every challenge, and each moment of thankfulness. Carry the philosophy of Amor Fati with you, let it illuminate your path, and turn every challenge into an opportunity for personal growth. Thank you for joining me on this journey, for embracing the teachings of Stoicism, and for being a vital part of this Stoic exploration. Don't let your journey end here. 
I encourage you to view one of the recommended videos on your screen to continue your exploration, learning, and growth. We are not merely studying Stoicism, we are living it.